Hey folks, Matt Eason here, Scholar Gladiatore. Now, I get asked not infrequently to um, review things from Cold Steel or to give my views on the products that Cold Steel make. Well, first of all, I should say, I have a couple of Cold Steel products myself, um, an axe and a knife. Um, I've always shied away from their swords and that's primarily what I'm going to talk about relatively briefly here. Um, and so people ask me, because obviously they know that I specialise in sabres, although obviously I do longsword and other things as well. And so people ask me, hey Matt, what about the Cold Steel sabres for test cutting? Um, now I have test cut with Cold Steel sabres, I've in fact reviewed one of their sabres uh, a few years ago now. Um, and uh, I think it was a was it a US Marine um, uh, NCO sword, and um, so which is owned by a friend of mine. And other friends of mine do well own cold steel swords, including the 1796 light like, cavalry, which is probably the model that I get asked about the most because lots of people want a 1796 light like, cavalry saber for cutting. They can't afford an antique or can't find an antique, and so they look to um, potential replicas. And so I'm going to try and keep my views as kind of reasonable and balanced, but also as brief as possible. And they are simply that uh, cold steel swords are um, not that close to the originals, but they're not bad, okay? So in a nutshell, that's my view of them. So in on their plus side, cold steel swords, as far as I've witnessed and read and heard and seen and everything else, they've got a fairly good reputation for durability. So they seem to have fairly good quality control um, and heat treatment, um, and they come with a reasonably good edge on them, although in the UK that can be complicated by the fact that sometimes they have to be sharpened by the company you're buying them from. So you can get some variability in the edge quality there. But let's just assume that most sharp swords, I mean, I've been critical of Albion swords even, um, of how sharp they arrive from the, from the shop. I don't think Albions are, um, are very sharp in general. None of the ones I've ever had, and I've had like five. Um, none of the Albions I ever had came to me particularly sharp and I had to sharpen them up myself anyway. So let's just assume that if you're buying a cold steel sword, you're gonna improve the sharpness of it when you get it, whether you need to or not. Um, and uh, in terms of durability, they seem to be pretty good. Um, in terms of fit and finish, they're okay. They're kind of middling. I think they're fair for the price because they're relatively cheap. Uh, I should mention they're not cheap in the UK. So uh, part of my views on cold steel swords is it dictated by the fact that by the time they've been imported into the United Kingdom and had VAT added to them and everything else, they end up in a slightly higher price category than you can get them for in America, if you're watching in America, or Canada, or various other parts of the world. Um, so unfortunately, cold steel swords are not particularly cheap in the UK um, for what they are, and I think there are better options in those pr price categories. You'll notice, incidentally, that I'm holding a sword by Dynasty Forge. Now, the reason I'm holding that is my major criticism of cold steel swords is whether they're replicas of military sabres of original patterns that I have many examples of and know very intimately myself, or whether they're replicas of sort of medieval swords, like this um, pretty good quality replica by Dynasty Forge, um, is that one of the things they get wrong consistently is mass and weight distribution. Now I'm going to talk about those two things in a separate video in a more detailed thing because I've noticed recently a lot of people talking about mass uh, of swords without any reference to weight distribution. Now in a sword those two things are inextricably linked and a sword can be heavier but have really good weight distribution. Um, but in Cold Steel's case my general criticism is that they lack enough distal taper. So for those of you, probably 99% of you who watch this channel regularly, you all know what distal taper is, but purely for the people who don't know what the hell I'm talking about with distal taper. So you're used to seeing uh, blades that um, have different shapes looking at them sideways on. But if we now look down the edge, from either from flat to edge or from edge to edge if it's double edged, then you'll notice that the blade is thicker down here than it is up here. Some knives have distal taper, um, some don't. Some swords have distal taper and some don't. Now that's important to point out that not all swords have distal taper and not all swords have the same degree of distal taper. But swords that are of a design which requires a certain amount of distal taper, sometimes quite aggressive distal taper, really need it there. They have it there for a reason, because if you don't have the distal taper there, they feel wrong in the hand, they're unwieldy, they're slow moving, 
they're not good for fighting with. Now, one of the things we have to mention there is, notice I said not good for fighting with. So there's a big difference between making something that chops tatami mats or pig carcasses well, and making something that you can fight with well. Note, people chop down trees with wood chopping axes, not swords, um, but they generally speaking, if they want to fight and they want to use an axe, they don't use a wood chopping axe, they use a battle axe, which has a completely different blade geometry, usually much lighter, uh, and this kind of thing. So what we use for chopping through something is not necessarily what the best thing is to choose for fighting with. And I feel that partly, Cold Steel's design choices and manufacturing has been dictated by durability, so they really don't want things coming back that are broken or potentially bent in normal test cutting, backyard test cutting. And secondly, they want things that are good at chopping things up, but they don't necessarily care about something that's good at fight for fighting with. So whilst this sword, much like an Albion, has great distal taper and great um, kind of weight distribution, okay, um, it, it's just a well-made sword for using as a sword. In my opinion, some of the cold steel swords are not great swords, but they might be great at chopping things up in your backyard, and they're not the same thing, okay? If you want a sword or a an object, shall we say, that's optimised for cutting tatami mats or an object that's optimised for cutting bamboo poles or water bottles or whatever you cut, that is not going to be the optimum. It isn't going to be exactly the same object as what you would design for fighting with. Okay? So cold steel swords, in my opinion, often lack distal taper where it needs to be there. And that doesn't necessarily only mean that they're not thin enough up in this part of the blade, but they're often not thick enough in this part of the blade. In other words, looking purely at their weight doesn't give you the full picture. So if you look at a cold steel 1796 that is on paper a bit overweight, the problem is even more exaggerated when you hold it because it doesn't have enough distal taper, it's not thick enough down here, it's not thin enough up here, and therefore it feels completely different to an original 1796 in the hand. I'm gonna caveat that, okay? I think I've said enough about this topic. So cold steel swords overall, they're durable, they're good for backyard cutting, uh, the fit and finish is not bad. They generally speaking, in my experience, lack distal taper where it's necessary and they tend to be a bit overweight and a bit overbuilt, I think, because cold steel uh, want, you know, they expect their things to be abused in backyard cutting, but they don't want them to fall apart. Um, but, and what I will finish off um, by saying is that uh, for the price point of where they are, they're not bad, okay? Um, but the price point is obviously, obviously going to be different in different places. But the reason I don't personally own any cold steel swords myself at the moment is um, because I have always found that there is a better option for, if not the same price, for a little bit more. And the other thing I would say, just to finish off, is that these are my views based on the cold steel swords that I have seen over the course of the last maybe 10 to 15 years, so quite a long period of time. It might not apply to all models of cold steel sword because I haven't seen them all. And equally, it might be, and I have heard, and this is, I've heard this on the grapevine, but I can't confirm it, that certain models of their sword have got better with subsequent improvements and sort of later generations. And one example of that, that being apparently, but I can't vouch for this personally, the 1796 Light Cavalry Saber. People do tell me that whilst it used to handle a bit like a baseball bat, they have got better distal taper on them in recent years and they do handle more similar to the originals now. But until I see uh, a recently made one, I can't vouch for that myself. Um, so there we go. And I would also say this video has been specifically about cold steel swords. Um, as I say, I own a couple of cold steel axes and a cold steel knife and, you know, they're, they're good things. This is not to be seen as me sort of bashing on cold steel as a company at all. But cold steel swords, they are what they are, and those are my views of them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon for another video. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.